Um, now we're going to add a couple more methods down here. Let's make some space here. And some more space. Okay. So our degree will also be affected by gravity. So let's have a function for that. So public void apply gravity. And like our player class is going to be very similar. We're just going to be adding a constant y um, velocity. Or we're going to be constantly increasing it, which is going to give it an acceleration. And so that's that. And then, and I guess sort of just to show how these two come into play. So um, let's go ahead and erase all this. Let's do this. Yes, undo all of that. And so for looking at this, so the gravity is going to be adding an amount to it. So it's going to be going in the downward direction. And so we're going to have some force going in the downward direction. Uh, right in the downward direction. And we're also going to have some direction going in this, this direction. And we're also going to have something going in this direction. So you can imagine one of the particles will be going in, in this direction. And then because of gravity, it slow, slowly starts going down, down, down in this direction. So the x will always be that constant value because it's not affected by gravity. But the y value, it will start off going in the upward direction. And then it'll start coming downward uh, because of the gravity. So that's how gravity is going to affect the particle. And now we can go ahead and add some more, more logic here. So Let's go ahead and fill in the tick method here. So we start actually changing these x and y positions based on the velocity. So we have an x here. And I'll write this all out again and then explain it right after. So we're going to have a negative x velocity plus x position. And then we're going to do the same thing with this one. So velocity x plus 1 here. And then we're going to have, actually, we're going to just copy this over. And we'll just do this. So 2, 3, 2, 3. And this will be like this. And then we're going to also do some change the y positions here, which is equal to the velocity of the y plus the y position. And then we're going to do the y1, which is going to be the velocity of y plus y1 minus 2. And we can copy this over. And copy this over. And Let's go ahead and also apply some gravity here. Okay, so now let me go ahead and explain what's going on here. So, like I said, we're setting the x and the y positions of our debris objects. Um, and so let me go ahead and pull up paint again. Oops. 
So we have paint here, and we have our four objects here. So we have, remember, index 0, index 1, index 2, and index 3, OK? And we're going to move this in the negative direction. So we have our x position here. The next x position is going to be in this direction by whatever velocity x is. And then this x is going to be in this direction as well. These ones are positive, so they'll go in this direction. And then for the y's, this one is going, the zero is going to go in, right? So when you add, you go downwards. So we're going to go down here. And sorry, this is a negative velocity, so it's going to actually go in the upward direction here. So we have a, a negative 7 here. So it's going to be velocity y minus. So we're actually going to go up. And then for our second one, we're also going to go up here by a certain amount. And for these ones, it's the same. So we're doing an add addition of velocity y. But we're doing it by this this is minus two here. So we're gonna go up, but not quite as much as the as the um, ones below it. And so it's gonna go like that. And there's also gonna be some gravity applied to it. So it's gonna start off going like this, and then it'll go down because of velocity. This one it'll go um, because the Actually, this would be the opposite again. So yeah, I'm, I'm confusing myself here. So this one will be actually the bigger one here. Um, because remember, this is negative 7 minus 2. So that's negative 9. And negative goes in the upward direction. So this would be negative 9. And this one will be negative 7. So negative 9 is going to be bigger than negative 7. And so this one up here is going to go higher, this one's going to be lower, this one's going to be higher. So this one's going to go like that, and then this one's just going to go a little bit up, then it's going to go down. And same here, this one's going to go way up, and then down, and this one's just going to go a little bit, and it's going to go all the way down. And the reason why I have this negative 2 here is, is just because I think it looks better um, when they don't go at the same speed. You can play around with this value and use whatever works for you. So now we're going to go ahead and create a couple more methods here. So let's do public boolean should remove. And let's do if y1 is greater than game dot get window height then we're going to return true otherwise we return false and here what's happening here is we have a function here to determine when we're going to de-render or remove the debris particles and y1 if you remember that's the one up here so it doesn't matter if it's y1 or y3 but whenever one of these um, particles higher particles is is greater than the the height of the window so whenever it goes off screen down here then we're going to go ahead and return true so then we should remove everything the reason why we use the particles up here instead of the ones down here is because, well, you can imagine if this one reaches the bottom, this one will still be up here, and you don't want to remove it yet. Um, it will look weird if this just disappeared. So we want to wait until this last one here gets off the screen. 
So that's that. And now let's go ahead and do public void draw graphics G. And in here, let's do four int i equals zero, i is less than four, i plus plus, and g draw. Uh, okay, I didn't want that. So draw image, and let's go ahead and do degree i. So remember debris got set up here from this so it's our texture that we're loading in here and which texture we want is based on this i and in here let's do xi yi width height and null. Yeah. Okay. So we're just passing in the textures and, and our dimensions. And let's go ahead and import this. Okay. Oh, um, this should be tick, not ticket. It's a typo there. And yeah, that looks good. Okay, so now we're gonna go to our block class. And we're gonna make a couple changes here. So we're gonna go ahead and add two instance variables up here. So private boolean hit and private debris debris. So the hit is gonna be a boolean that represent what represents whether or not the blocks the block has been hit or not, and the debris will just be a reference to the, the debris for this block. And so we're gonna create a couple functions here. So let's go to the bottom and let's do public void hit. And this is gonna be a function that gets called in the player class. Um, and so when the player hits the block, then we want to do some stuff in the block. So we're gonna start by initializing this to true, or setting this to true. So now we've been hit, so we're gonna update that. And then we're gonna go ahead and spawn in a debris. So let's do new debris. And we want to set the position to the exposition, exposition of this block, the y position of this block get width, get height of the block, and then get scale. And if you remember in the debris, um, we initialize it, it already does some math to set the size here. So we just have to pass in the width and the height of this block. Okay, so now that we have that, we want to go ahead, go ahead and call the the breeze tick method in here, um, and this tick will just keep going. So we only want to, so so the debris won't exist until this hit is set to true, um, or when when this hit gets called and then this hit gets set to true, um, then the debris will get created. So at that point, we want to call the tick method. So if we if the block's been hit, then we're going to go ahead and call the tick method for this degree. I don't know why I keep seeing ticket. And if we don't have this if statement, then we're just going to have this debris that's not initialized to anything. And then if you try to call tick on that, then it's going to error out. So be sure you have, be sure to add this check right here. And we also want to update the render method here. So we want to call the render method for the debris when you've been hit. So um, just do, so if we haven't been hit, 
Then we can just well, render the, the block as is. Otherwise, if we've been hit, well then we want to go ahead and call the draw method for our debris. So we start rendering it in. And we no longer call this draw for the block. So the block will disappear and then the debris um, draw method will get called. Which if you remember here, it just loads in or renders the, the debris. So that's the render method. And we also want to add one more method here. Public boolean should remove. And this again will be a method that gets called by the player. And this is just a way of accessing um, whether or not we should uh, remove the debris or not. So we're just passing up this, this function from the debris here. Um, the only way to access the debris is through this block class, so that's why we have to do this, and we can't call the debris directly from the player class. So that's going to be it for our our block class. So now we have to go back to our um, our player class and add a couple more things. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. So yeah, so now we're back at our player class and let's go ahead and add private 